Heinem and Heyer, Chapter 6 on Differentiation, the mixed exercise 6S at the end. First question, differentiate each of these functions. Right, well, first one, for this part. Now, the simple rule for differentiation is simply multiply by the power, take one off the power. If a term looks like this, where you've got the coefficient, the variable, and the power, calling it power, you could call it the exponent, you could call it the index, I'll just refer to it simply as a power, even perhaps to be a fraction and so on, then the rule is simply multiply by that power, so the number will multiply the coefficient, and take one off of it. Extremely simple rule, as long as all of the terms look like this, separate terms with x on top with a clearly expressed power. So in these cases here, in the first two, that isn't the case. I've got separate terms. That part's easy enough. And that one's fine, because I've got 4x squared. The x is on top with a power, but here it isn't. So that x underneath would be expressed as x to the power negative 1 on top. That negative in the index referring to the fact that that x should be the reciprocal of it, should be underneath. Now that I've got two perfect terms, I can differentiate that by multiplying by 2, differentiate that, multiply by negative 1. So using the terminology of the functions, f dashed, I've got multiply by the power, 2 times 4 is 8, take one off the power so it goes down to 1, but I do need to show a 1. And I'm not going to show all the little bits of arithmetic either. Next one, multiply by the power, so negative 1 times negative 3 will make it positive 3. Take 1 off the power, 1 away from negative 1 makes it actually negative 2. Then put it back the way you found it. So 8x means 8x, but x to the negative 2 means it's power 2 negative underneath. So I'll put the 3 on top and the x squared underneath. That'll be the first one. Next one. Separate terms, yes, but that's not got the power expressed clearly. So I have to write out what it means. Now, a root is a fractional power. The second root means it should be a 2 underneath. It's just power 1, and of course you won't see a power 1. So it's power 1, root 2, 1 over 2, plus 7. Now you can differentiate it. This time I'll use that other notation, since it's expressed as y equals, so it'll be dy by dx. And the rule simple, multiply by the power. A half times 5, that's 5 upon 2. 1 off the power, a half take away 1, negative a half. And this one's easy, that's a constant, so its derivative is 0. Or if you like, you can think of it as x to the 0 multiplied by 0 gives 0. But you wouldn't do that, you would just say it's a constant, so it doesn't change, it's got no rate of change. Put it back the way you found it. Well, it's only the x that's got this negative. The 5 and the 2 are sitting there quite harmless bystanders. So the 5 will stay where it is on top, the 2 will stay where it is underneath. It's this x that's going to move underneath. That's the negative power taken care of. The 2 stands for a square root. So 5 upon 2 root x. And I don't need to show power 1. Then, c. Now this time, I don't have separate terms because it's a single fraction. So I'll need to split it into separate terms. They share that denominator. So that means I've got the 6x cubed over the x, minus the x squared also over the x, and the 5 is also over the x. And then put these three terms into terms with just x on top. Well, the 6 is just the coefficient. And then you can either think x goes into that, cancels it down to make it x squared. Or if you're dividing terms, you subtract the powers. Power 3, take away power 1, power 2. Again, you could think, well, x will knock out one of the x's and just leave you x. But you can do top power, take away bottom power. 2, take away 1, just 1. You don't need to show it 1. And similarly here, that x is underneath, so to show it on top would be x to the negative 1. Or you could think of it as powers. The power of x on top is 0, underneath is 1. 0, take away 1, negative 1. Now it's fit to differentiate. You've got separate terms, where in each term you can quite clearly see the coefficient and the power. So now I can differentiate. So f dash x will be multiplied by the power, 12. Take one off the power, 1. Don't need to show it. The linear term, the, co the power is 1. Multiply by 1, and you've got 1 times it. 1 off the power would make that a 0, but x to the 0 is just 1, so it means it just becomes 1. But generally what you do is if you've got a linear term, if it's just x with no power, if you've got a linear term, that differentiates just to the number in front of it, just to the coefficient, just like the gradient of a line y equals mx plus c. 
That's the gradient. The coefficient of the linear term is the gradient, and the gradient is the rate of change. And the last one, multiply of the power, negative 1 times positive 5 will be negative 5. 1 off the power, negative 2. Let's put that back the way we found it. So there's 12x, minus 1, minus 5, and that x should be underneath the negative power, so it's underneath and it's power 2 over x squared. There's that one. Then for this one here, well, I need to separate it. There's several things here. There's something multiplying on top that would need separate and dividing underneath. There's two ways you could do this. You could either multiply the top out first, then divide it by the bottom, or I could simplify those two terms, then multiply the top. And I'll multiply the top out first. I've got x times x and x times 5 over root x. Then I'll split them. So I've got x squared over the root x. Might as well put that as x to the half now. Minus 5x over root x, x to the half. Then when you're dividing terms, you subtract the powers. So it's 2 taken away a half, it's 1 and a half. But I'll have to write that as 3 upon 2. Because when you use fractions in multiplications, you want them as improper fractions, not mixed numbers. Minus 5 times 1 take away a half. So that's going to be 5x to the half. Now it's fit to go. So divide by dx will be multiplied by the power. 3 upon 2 times it. 1 off of that drops it down to just a half. Multiply by the power, a half times 5, 5 upon 2, 1 off the power, negative a half. Put it back the way we found it. Now, there's two ways of writing these expressions where you've got a fraction multiplying a term. You could either write something like 3a upon 2, or you could just write 3 upon 2a. I suppose it's a matter of preference. This is actually better because it quite clearly shows the coefficient. But if you've got a number underneath, if it was 3 over 2a, that would be perhaps the only way you would show that, because I certainly wouldn't want to write 3 upon 2 times 1 over a. So it just depends what it looks like. So in this case, I think I'll preserve my coefficient and then put that back into root x. But in this case, I'll keep my 5 on top and my 2 underneath, and that x, since it's negative, will go underneath. And that fractional part means a root, so it's the second root. So I'll write my two terms that way. And there it is. That's question 1.